Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never, sing like never before. O oh my soul, I worship His holy name. I worship His holy name. So bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never, sing like never before. O oh my soul. I worship your holy name, yes, I worship your holy name, I worship your holy name, yes, I worship your holy name, bless the Lord, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, I worship, worship His holy name. Sing like never, sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship God's holy name, yes. And I worship God's holy name. And I worship God's holy name. And I worship God's holy name. And I worship, and I worship God's holy name. Yes, I worship God's holy name. One more time, one more time. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul, my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never, sing like never before. Oh, my soul. I worship God's holy name, yeah. I worship God's holy name. Yes, I worship God's holy name. I worship God's holy name. Yes, I worship God's holy name. I worship God's holy name. And I worship God's holy name. I worship God's holy name. Greetings, people. Welcome once again. It's your favorite girl, Princess Cleeton, Queen of Hearts and Laughter, <laughs> on a chapter a day, aka a card for short. And a chapter a day, we get to know who we are in Christ, the power we possess, the things we can and cannot do, the things we should or should not do, could or could not do, so that we can live a beautiful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view, that's the whole idea. Oh yes. As much as we want to spend eternity with God in heaven, we also desire his kingdom to come here on earth. If you pray the Lord's prayer, then you should mean it. And you should desire it to really be a practical reality in your life, right? So if you really want God to do and come through for you and do all this amazing stuff for you, then you really need to trust him. And believe in whatever you pray, whatever you say, right? 
So that's how it rolls. That's how it works. If you're just tuning in, this is a chapter a day. And I'm sure you're going to have a swell time together with us today. Don't tune off. Stay connected. Of course, we hand over the session to God in prayers. We do the birthday party where we give shout outs to people who are on our birthday book. And then we pray for every single person who was born on a particular day. And then we go to the Bible party and then we pray and thank God for an amazing session. So our Bible party is taken from the book of First Chronicles chapter 4 today. And it has 43 verses. First Chronicles chapter 4 and it has 43 verses. Oh yeah, people. Um, before we get on, I actually got on this amazing app that you can earn some coins that can get you to buy some basic things for yourself you know basically is actually monetizing your steps i would i would put it that way monetizing your steps so rather than wasting your steps just put it somewhere that it's accumulating some little fund it might be very tiny for a star but when you get the fund of it when you get a hold of it it becomes wonderful the beautiful thing about it is, I, I, I would say this one for Christians who are always very skeptical to get into some things, it has actually helped my prayer life. How? Because I used to be the person, I'm being honest here, there's some days that you wake up and it's time for you to pray and you feel like, okay, just sit on the bed and pray or lay on the bed and pray and you're just so sure within yourself that you're going to be able to pray while you're laying on the bed, which is hardly ever possible or sitting on the bed it's hardly ever possible by the time you know it you're already sleeping you're sleep praying you're basically not praying you're not sleeping either that's a waste of time you, there's no gain in that thing it's either you just choose to sleep or you choose to pray so most of the times i don't even sleep pray i just end up sleeping like you know like that but when i decided to start getting conscious about my walk about my steps i decided to pray a walk so while i'm praying i'm walking the funny thing is originally i couldn't pray past like 30 minutes when i hear people saying oh if you've been a christian for the longest time ever and you can't pray past even an hour that god gave basically they took the part where um Jesus took his three disciples and went with them on the Mount of Gethsemane to pray when he was about to face his last moments and he went to pray. And so some people kind of say, basically, as a child of God, the, the shortest time you should be able to spend time with God or communion with God is an hour because Jesus said to those his disciples that you couldn't even wait for me even for an hour. I don't want to say that is not true or true or not true to me i believe that when you pray heartfelt prayer to god he hears you you could pray heartfelt prayers for 15 minutes and someone prays vain babblings for five hours it's very possible but i'm not saying that don't desire to communion with god what why why am i saying this i'm saying this because i'm the person who used to not be able to get past 30 minutes of praying like it just felt like I'll be repeating myself over and over and over if I have to pray for more than 30 minutes believe you me people I've not been repeating myself and since I started doing the prayer walk sometimes I am taken aback that by the time I check my time it's like one hour 30 minutes two hours sometimes three hours and it doesn't feel like <laughs> it was three hours that's how interesting it can be when you're in the presence of God, when you're sold out and then you're gone into the whole prayer thing. Sometimes I kind of feel I'm not even so conscious that I'm praying because I'm thinking like I'm walking. This is a walk thing. But then my spirit man is kind of connected and stuff like that. See, it has really, really helped my prayer life. So I don't know about you. Maybe if you're finding difficulty in prayer, this is something that would intrigue you. From the start, I was so conscious about the steps rather than the prayer. But I got in to understand that it's not just about the steps. Let me get to pray. So for the most part, I'm singing, I'm worshiping God, and then I'm stepping, and then I'm walking. 
just walking like it could be in your room it could be in your bedroom it could be in your in your parlor it could be just around your house maybe in front of the lawn in front of your yard anywhere it could be anywhere you don't need to go far like very far it could be right inside your room but walk walk step don't don't sleep don't kneel sometimes we kneel and say oh kneeling is okay by the time you notice you're still sleeping your knees and laying on the bed is a very comfortable position to sleep oh yeah when i'm exhausted i could even sit like this and sleep oh yeah when i'm exhausted there are days that i barely sleep for like an hour hours when if i do that consistently Effectively for like three, four days, which I get to do sometimes. I know it's not good, but I get to do sometimes. I could literally sit and sleep. So people, join us on sweat coins. It's actually I think the pin post on my wall is actually there. You just click on the link and connect and you get the app running. And when you get the app, you just start walking. It'll be registering your steps and giving you particular coins. They have some challenges that are doing. They have 250,000 steps in the month of September. I've already done 60,000 so far. Mm. Yeah, I've already done 60,000 steps so far in the month of September. And this is just the fifth day, right? So you can do it. If someone would have told me that I'll be able to do 10,000 steps, so when I used to see people post their 10,000 steps in a couple of hours, this number of miles, I'm like, whoa, someone really does 10,000 steps? And it's not even the entire day. Mine, sometimes it gets to be like the entire day for the 10,000 steps. Sometimes just my prayer walk gets to give me like maybe... Um, Six to seven thousand averagely, six to seven thousand steps averagely, and for twenty minutes out of the one or two hours, or two hours thirty minutes, I actually jog a little bit for like twenty minutes, but the rest is a walk. So you could beat that. Like today, I actually got sixteen thousand steps. <laughs> I was taken aback. I was blown away. You know. Every time I want to do my prayer, I do it in prayer walk form. And so it has really been helping me. It has boosted my prayer life. It has made me, you know, gain more time with God, even without noticing. By the time I'm done, I'm like, what? It took me this number of hours? I can't believe. And it felt like nothing happened. It felt like maybe sometimes it feels like you just started praying, baby girl. Meanwhile, it has been like two, three hours. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, people. So um, please join us stepping. Monetize your steps. That's how I call it. That's my own way of saying it. You step and they give you some coins that you can use. For the most part, I've seen people pay for their Netflix um, um, subscriptions. Some people have paid for their Airbnb. The September month giveaway, actually, if you get the 2000 250,000 steps you could be one of the lucky winners to get a $250 voucher for an Airbnb of your choice that gets away that you're planning it could be maybe you want to go and relax and have time for yourself your steps could pay that for you it's stepping whether you get on the app or you don't get on the app you are stepping anyway so why not just get on the app and monetize your steps anyways everybody has a way to think that's by the way so let's come back to a chapter a day <laughs> welcome on board people we're excited to have you here every single time you come on a chapter a day we're very much elated we don't take it for granted everybody has 24 hours of life ascribed to them deposited in their life bank and you've decided to come and spend whether it be it five minutes two minutes ten minutes 15 minutes some people stay until the end of a chapter a day you decided to bring and put this amount of your life basically in my care at this point i don't take it for granted people you could have been doing anything else you could have been anywhere else oh yes you could have been but you chose to be on this live stream and for that i am grateful for that i am honored and i don't joke with it 
I don't joke with it. So thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part of a chapter a day. Please don't forget to share us out. Sharing is caring. And when you share, of course, you get a lot more people to come on here and we get blessed together. And more so, not only the blessing together, but you could also get someone who has something really special to tell us or who has something really important to tell us. And the person will be able to come on because I can't get access to your audience except you give me access. And how do you give me access to your audience by sharing whatever I'm doing here? Some people say, oh, I can't go live like princess. You can't go live, but you can get people to listen to what we're doing here, to participate, to be a part of a chapter a day. You can do that. And how do you do that by sharing? Welcome, Mr. Chat Elvis. I actually thought of you like a couple of minutes ago before I even started a chapter a day and I was like, I was going to get to you. Forgive me, my, other, my WhatsApp is really bad, but I'm hoping that we get a new one soonest. So hope you're doing great. Hope everything is fine with you. I'm excited that I can see you on a chapter a day. You know what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. I'm totally and completely excited. Mr. Garrison was talking to me and I was like, yeah, I already saw you on a chapter a day. And I was so, so, so excited. I'm just so grateful to God. I know God answers prayers and I know God is very faithful and I know he's a great and awesome God and there is restoration coming your way restoration that you will be in awe of what God can do in the life of they that love him okay God is gonna surprise you so let's pray people we normally don't talk this much before we pray so don't get it twisted it's just today most of the times we allow God to just use us the way he wants to use us on the chapter a day. We're not the kinds of persons who would say, as it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be well without any man. No, some days we let God just do what he wants to do with us. Like if he says talk and talk and talk and talk and talk before you pray, I will just boop, 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 and talk till uh, before I pray. Some days we just get in after singing, we pray immediately before we start. So we're very flexible. But we just let God lead. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chalvis. We are so glad to have you back on the chapter today. We do not take it for granted. And I, like I said, God is going to do a great and mighty restoration for you that you will be in awe. Go and read Psalms 126. That is a scripture for you. And God is a restorer. So believe him and trust him. And you would see a restoration grace that will bring overtake. Overtaking is allowed. You see, in this our Christian race, overtaking is allowed. Elijah was on foot and he was waiting on God. He was praying and trusting God. And then Ahab had already gone on a horse, on a chariot. He was already gone. He had left where Elijah was. But Elijah stayed and waited on God. And after he was done with his servant, on foot, he was able to bypass Ahab who was on chariot. Ahab had started going already a long time ago. They said that guy went three times or four times. I'm not, I can't remember exactly. Either three times or seven times. I don't know which one, whether it was the one of the shooting of the arrow that was three or the one of the this, but I just know it was more than one time. It was more than one time that he sent his servant to go and look. And then the servant was saying he can't see anything. He can't see anything. And then later on, he saw a hand in the cloud, you know. So I know that it's more than one time. So it, it was a couple of times. Imagine all that time when he would go to check and come back, go to check and come back. Ahab on chariot was already gone. He had left. But Elisha, Elijah on foot overtook Ahab. On the chariot child of God mr. Elvis brace yourself hmm? fasting your seatbelt what God is about to do with you and for you you will be in awe. you will be in awe. even people around you will look at you and say this can only be God watch out okay let's go Father, we thank you for this beautiful day you've made. We rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your faithfulness, your loving kindness, your tender mercies, your love for us. 
They're new every morning. Great is that faithfulness, O oh Lord. Father, we just bless you. We just honor you. We magnify you. You're the God who cannot change but can change things. Father, we're ready to dine and sup in your presence. We know when we always come to dine and sup with you, it is a balanced diet. So we're ready for another infilling. We're ready for you to bless us, speak to us, O oh God. Minister to us in a way that only you can. Because only you know the sincere and honest heart desires of all your children who are gathered here today in your presence to get to receive from you, O oh God. Father, increase while I decrease, so it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, and heard here. No iota of me or any human being will be experienced here in any way at all. It's going to be all you and you alone. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Abba Father, because you deserve all our praise. You deserve all the glory, honor, and adoration, both now and forevermore. Thank you, Father. Speak to us, O oh God, like never before. Enlighten us, guide us, lead us, save us, empower us. Speak to us and through us. Speak for us as well. Thank you, King of Glory, because we know you always hear and answer. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say a big Amen. Amen, people. Amen, amen, amen. And we are having a Bible party on First Chronicles chapter 4, and it has 43 verses. But before we get there, let's do the birthday party. Let's get the birthday party started. The birthday party started. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's get the birthday party started. But the party started. Mm. Okay, so let's start. The first person on our birthday book is Mr. Aka Pride. Mr. Aka Pride is a friend of mine that we went to the same primary school together. He was a very smart guy, very calm, very reserved and composed. Of course, when we were younger, we didn't really know a lot about every other person. But that particular guy, he was smart. Man, he was so smart. I like smart people. <laughs> I like smart people very much. Okay. And of course, people who are very friendly and very welcoming. I really, really, really appreciate them. I've always liked to be around people who are fun to be with, people who are friendly, people who are welcoming, people who like to laugh, people who like to make fun. I've always loved to be around such people. And Mr. Aka Pride is one of them. The second person is Mr. Awa Selassine. Mr. Awa Selassine was actually like a big to me. My eldest sister was in the same um, class with them before I came to the secondary school, before I came for high school to the place where he was. So I was in a different high school and then I got transferred to another high school. The high school where I went to, my eldest sister went to that school for her secondary level. While I was in another one. And so when I came there, most of her friends kind of like automatically wanted to take care of their friend's kid sister. So I was blessed. And Mr. Awa Celestine was one of them. He's a very nice person. And he's now an exceptional teacher. Mm. The way he was always leading people and guiding people. I'm not surprised that he's a teacher. And of course, he's a very good one at that. Thank you so much, Mr. Awa Celestine, for being your amazing self, for impacting yourself into the students that you teach. May the good Lord bless you and enlarge your coast. The next person is Mam Kumasi Mercy. Mam Kumasi Mercy was like a class ahead of me or two. I'm not sure exactly, but she was like ahead of me. One thing I know is that she was ahead of me, either a class or two classes ahead of me. And she has always been the kind of person who likes class and push like you know that kind of niceness she's that kind of person so i think she's doing modeling or something if i'm not mistaken uh she also has this very broad smile see i've told you guys lots and lots of times that it looks like god decided to just release smiling upon cigarettes so a lot of like i don't know cigarettes i can't I could literally count the number of cigarettes who don't smile. I could literally count. Like almost all the cigarettes I know, they have this 
pretty amazing smiles. Mm. So for that one reason, I was glad that I went to Sikha Baptist College. <laughs> so God gave me this smiling prowess. Anyways, but the funny thing is that I actually started learning how to smile and laugh a lot when I was in high school, rather. I guess God had already released it to me when I was in Seika, but I wasn't using it as much when I was there, as opposed to when I was now in high school. I started using it a lot more. In university, it was just words. I was using it like, like there was no tomorrow. I was using it every time. And then at some point, it just became a part of me because I'd done it so much. So much so that even when I'm hurting, and I'm telling somebody that this thing you're doing to me is hurting. I can't say it frowning. I can't say it angry. So sometimes they don't take me seriously. That is the downside. But it's okay. I prefer to smile than to frown though. <laughs> so Mom Kumaisa Messi has this pretty smile. She's a fabulous person. She likes glitz and glamour, which is great. It suits her very well. And of course, like I said, I'm not sure if she's a model or something. But I always see her some... She has some really good pose on some pictures. So I think she's into modeling. I think, but I'm not sure. Anyways, but she's very pretty. So it's possible. Okay. And then the next person is Mam Patundango. Mam Patundango is, um, is, is a friend of mine that I got to meet in this group. Yeah, it was that same group I was, I've told you guys about. I'm in several groups and most of the groups is a group made of a lot of smart people. People who are doing great in their lives in their own little way, in their own little corner. They're making a difference in their generation. And they kind of, some people think I should be in those groups. So they get to call me and add me up in the group. And it says, so I was like, when I joined this group, I told you guys what I always normally do in groups. I get there and um, I just tell, I just start looking at, out for people who are amazing, people who are, who, who, who believe in the same kinds of things I believe in. From your comments, from your contributions, I can know that you're someone who stands for the things I stand for. And sometimes I just spark up a conversation in your inbox, you know, and all that. And then I get to see that you're my kind of person. So I went and visited Mam Patundango. Oh my God, she took me around. It was really beautiful. Oh God, she is a sweet soul. I enjoyed the meal that was prepared. I had fun. I wish I could stay there, but I had just a day. So I made the most of it. She's an amazing person. She's into agriculture and she's also into IT. She's a tech lady. She's into agriculture. She's also a Yali, I think. She's also a Yali um, alumni, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if it's Yali or Shevnin, but one of those, she's an alumni and she's a tech, she's a STEM um, alumni as well. I think so. She's a multi-skilled, amazing lady, just like that. And she's smallish like me. Like, it looks like these smallish people were always like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Happy birthday to you, Mam Patundango. I really miss you so, so much. Okay, and then the next person is Mam Ishu. Mam Ishu, I actually got to know her on Facebook. And we get to communicate from time to time. She's also an amazing person. Very fun to be with. She also likes class and she normally does, um, she normally advertises a lot of pretty and amazing female wares on her social media platforms. I don't know if she actually does that as business or it's just a fun time thing for her. Or it's just, a, I don't know exactly, but she's a nice person. And one thing I like about her is that she's very straightforward. She's upfront. I love straightforward people. Sometimes people say it's not good to be too straightforward, but when it's part of you, it's really hard not to be like that. And I know that sometimes it can be very, very um, provocative. Or how should I say? But trust me, being a straightforward person is already hard in itself because sometimes it feels like everybody just thinks you're a perfectionist and you're always seeing trouble. But it's just that that is you. It's not that you're always seeing trouble. You really want to see, when you want to see the good in people, you see the good in people. But when you see the, when you want to put out the trouble, people think you're just too blunt, which is not, to them, it feels like it's not fair. But to me, I feel like 
if I had a lot of people who were really, really too blunt to me, I would have been like way, way better than I am today as opposed to just having praise, praise, praise people around you because people can praise you to error. Oh yeah. My mission is that person will tell you as it is. She'll tell you straightforward. You want to stay, you stay. You don't want to stay, you back out. She, she ha What does she have to lose? Like making you become a better version of yourself. Is it a plus to you or to her? It's to you. Well, a little bit to her because if, the, if you're a better person, the world will be a better place. There will be one less troublesome person on earth, which is a good thing. Right? Yeah. So it's a plus even to her that there's one less troublesome person on earth because of something she said or something she or an advice she gave you or something so happy birthday to you ma'am miss you and then the next person is mom susie mom susie actually we went to the same high school together so when i came to the high school i was talking about i met her there she's a very nice person she looks so much like an artist to be but i was i wasn't surprised she's a smart person i wasn't surprised that she ended up doing nursing but she looks so much like an art student with her mannerism with the way she relates to people with the way she does things you know they always say that is the art people that are always very noisy and all over the place and making fun and getting distracted distracting people and all that hmm that was mom susie for you and of course it's nice distraction it's not like the irritating annoying distraction no even in our accident association group I, we actually lost contact and then we finally connected again in our accident association group thanks to mr sa bernard for bringing me and getting me connected again to the accident association of my year i'm really really grateful so i met mom susie again on there and it has been amazing we get to talk to each other from time to time not as often but the once in a while that we get on there, she encourages me. She's pushing me to keep doing my things that I'm doing. And of course, she gets to comment from time to time on my posts that I make. I really appreciate you, ma'am, Susie. So let's take that again. Happy birthday, Mr. Aka Pride. Happy birthday, Mr. Awa Celestine. Happy birthday, ma'am, Kumase Mercy. Happy birthday, ma'am, Patundango. Happy birthday, ma'am, Mishu. Happy birthday, ma'am. Susie, yeah. happy birthday to you all. So let's get to pray for the birthday people and get on with the Bible party. Like I told you guys, the Bible party is taken from the book of First Chronicles chapter 4 and it has 43 verses. That is an average read. Sorry, I need to take this, a little bit of this. Toast to the mild family. Okay. So let's go. Father, we thank you for adding a new year to the lives of these people. We thank you for opening the windows of heaven upon their lives and pouring out your choices, blessings, and rebuking every devourer from their lives. Father, I pray you cause them to be trailblazers, pace setters, and wall changers in the mighty name of Jesus. Cause them to increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before men. Let their light continuously shine brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. Because your word says... You're going to move us from glory to glory. And so because we're holding on and believing your word, that's going to be a practical reality in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, oh God, that you're going to cause them to be able to stand before kings, not before mean men, that their gifts will make a way for them, causing them to stand before kings, not before mean men. Lord, I pray that you're going to strategically and divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate and retrogress. And you're going to divinely and strategically connect them to people and things that will cause them to progress, be their best version and fulfill purpose to the glory of your name. Lord, I pray as you enlighten their eyes and their understanding to know what they're called to do, what they were born to do, the solution they were born to be to the problem that they are supposed to solve here on earth. Oh, Father, I pray, oh God, that you're going to cause them to stay on course and stay on track. That if they get to a point where they feel overwhelmed, they feel like they want to give up, they want to back out, they don't want to do this no more, that they will hear a clean, loud, clear voice that would say to them, this is the way, walk thou in it, oh God. Father, that you're going to 
cause them to walk the path and not stray and not derail that they will keep doing your will and fulfill purpose to the glory of your name and people will see your good works in their lives and glorify your father who is in heaven Lord, I pray whatever they lay their hands on, you're going to prosper. Wherever they tread their feet upon you, give it to them as a possession. It is your word and we're coming, holding on your word to you because you say you exalt your word higher than your name. Let that be a practical reality in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. As there's an overflowing of the blessings that you're releasing upon them, O oh Lord, let those who come in contact with them literally rub off of this blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, that the blessing is going to encompass them as a shield round about and no weapon formed or fashioned against them shall prosper in Jesus name. There'll be a blessing in their generation and beyond. Father, cause them to stand out and not fit in. You created each and every one of us to stand out in, your, in our area of specialty. Lord, as they get doing that which you've called them to do, oh God, they will stand out in every area. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're going to teach them all the strategies and techniques that will help them not only to get to the top, but to get there and stay there permanently. You're the God who lifts one up and brings another down. So, Lord, I pray that you're going to lift those children of your to the top and teach them how to stay there permanently thank you lord for your goodness but i pray that you seal every prayer request with the blood of jesus cause them oh god perfect all that concerns them give them a sound 126 state a continuous state of laughter singing rejoicing and dancing lord as you open beautiful pages of their lives write awesome stories on these books on these pages so that when they stand up, when they look at the stories, it's going to be blessings, blessings, blessings all the way. It's going to be reasons for them to sing, dance and rejoice because you're a faithful God, because you're a great God, because you're a good father. Thank you, Lord, for doing all these awesome and amazing things in their lives, both now and forevermore. We bless you, Lord, because you deserve it. You're the ancient of days, the mighty man in battle. Lord, we just thank you. We just honor you. Father, we pray, O oh God, that you're going to open doors for them that no man can shut and shut every door that is not of you. You also said in your word that if fervent and effectual door is open for us, but there are many adversaries. Father, I pray that you're going to go ahead as well and deal with all the adversaries at those doors so that each and every one of them is going to match in gallantly and enjoy that which you've prepared for them on the other side of the door. Thank you, Lord. We know when we're with you, when you're in the boat, when you carry us along, we are sure to get to our destination. Lord, we just bless you. We thank you. We honor you because you're king. Let your name alone be glorified. Let your name alone be magnified. We give you all the honor and the praise that is due to your name. We worship you in the beauty of your holiness. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because we know you always hear an answer. Let money meet money in their pockets. Blessings meet blessings in their lives. Favor meets favor in their lives. Even as you clothe them with a garment of praise, honor, and favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, that let amazing things happen to them this year so much so that they'll be here at the same time next year. Testifying of your awesome goodness upon their lives. They'll be here live on the chapter already testifying about this. Thank you, Lord God. Because we know you always hear an answer. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints shall join me say, Amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their lives. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. In their lives. As we pray, we seal the prayers. Amen, 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 amen. With the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. 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 May the good Lord bless you all tremendously. May he enlarge your coast and fill your bands and prosper you all in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Thank you to my Thai friends who are connected. Thank you to my amazing friends who are connected from all over the world. We want to say thank you. We're grateful that you're part of a chapter a day today. Let's get the Bible party started. Bible party started. It's First Chronicles chapter 4 and it has 43 verses. Are you ready? I was born ready. So can we get on? Sure we can. <gasps> sure we can. Yes, people, we can. We can. We can. We can. Okay, so let me fix my cursor. Of reading so you see me looking at this side I'm reading on the laptop so let's go second not second first <laughs> are you ready yeah I'm ready first Chronicles chapter 4 the sons of Judah Perez Hezron and Carmi and Hur and Shobal and Rehar the son of Shobal begat Jahath, and Jahath begat Athumai and Lahad. These are the families of the Zoratites, and these were of the father of Atam, Jezreel, and Ishmar, and Idbash, and the name of their sister was Hazel Elof, Elphoni. We're starting all over. First Chronicles chapter four. The sons of Judah, Phares, Hezron, and Carmi, and Hur, and Shobal, and Rehar, the son of Shobal, begat Jahath, and Jahath begat Ahumai, and Lahard. These are the families of their Zoratites, and these were of the father of Atam, Jezreel, and Ishmar, and Idbash, and the name of their sister was Hazel Elponi, and Penuel, the father of Gedor, and Ezra, the father of Hushash. These are the sons of Hur, the firstborn of Ephrata, the father of Bethlehem, and Ashu, the father of Tekoar, had two wives. Hela and Nara, and Nara bare him Ahuzam, and Hefer, and Temeni, and Hahashtari. These were the sons of Nara. And the sons of Hela were Zereth, and Jezor, and Ethnan. And Koz begat Anub, and Zobebar, and the families of Ahahel the son of Harum, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, O oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. And Chelub, the brother of Shua, begat Mehi, which was the father of Eshton. And Eshton began Bethrapha, and Pasir, and Tehinar, the father of Enahash. These are the men of Rekar. And the sons of Kenaz, Othnael and Sariah, and the sons of Othniel, Hathad, and Mionotai, and Mio, and Mio, and Mio begat Ophra, and Sariah begat Joab, the father of the valley of Charashim, for they were craftsmen, and the sons of Caleb, the sons of Jephunneh, Eru, Ella, and Nam, and the sons of Ela, even Kenaz, and the sons of Jehalelil, Ziph, and Zephar, Tyria, and Azaril, and the sons of Ezra were Jeter, and Mered, and Ephar, 
and Jalon, and she bare Miriam, and Shammai, and Ishba, the father of Estemor, and his wife, Jehudijah, bare Jared, the father of Gedor, and Heber, the father of Socho, and Jekuthiel, the father of Zanoar. These and these are the sons of Bithiar, the daughter of Pharaoh, which Mered took, and the sons of his wife, Hodiah, the sister of Naham, the father of Kalar, the Gamite, and the Estemor, and Estemor, the Machatite, and the sons of Shimon were Amnon, and Rena, Benanan, and Tilon, and the sons of Ishi were Zoheth, and Benzoheth. The sons of Shelar, the son of Judah, were Er, the father of Lachar, and Ladar, the father of Marashar, and the families of the house of them that wrought fine linen of the house of Ashbear, and Joachim, and the men of Chozeba, and Joash, and Saraph, who had the dominion in Moab, and Jashubilehem, and these are ancient things. These were the porters, and those that dwell among plants and hedges, there they dwelt with the king for his work. The sons of Simeon were Nemuel, and Jamin, Jarib, Zira, and Shual, and Shaol, Shalom his son, Mipsam his son, Mishma his son, and the sons of Mishma, Hamuel his son, Zachar his son, Shimei his son, and Shimei had sixteen sons and six daughters, but his brethren had not many children, neither did all their family multiply like to the children of Judah, and they dwelt at Beersheba, and Molada, and Hazashual, and at Bilhar, and at Azim, and at Tolard, and at Bethuel, and at Horma, and at Ziklag, and at Beth Machaboth, and at Hazar Susim, and at Beth Bire, and at Sharain. These were their cities unto the reign of David, and their villages were Atham and Ain, Rimon and Tochen, and Ashen, five cities, and all their villages that were round about the same cities unto Baal, these were their habitations and their genealogy, and Meshobab and Jam and Jamlech and Joshash the son of Am Amaziah, and Joel the Je and Joel and Jehu the son of Joshibia and Joel and Jehu the son of Joseph Bayer, the son of Seraiah, the son of Asiel, there and Elioni, and Elioni, and Jacobar, and Jeshohire, and Ahasiah, and Adiel, and Jeshimel, and Benaiah, and Zizar, the son of Shifi, the son of Alon, the son of Jediah, the son of Shimri, the son of Shemaiah, these mentioned by their names were princes in their families, and the house of their fathers increased greatly, and they went to the entrance of Gedor, even unto the east side of the valley, to seek pasture for their flocks. And they found fat pasture and good, and the land was wide and quiet and peaceable, for they had for they of Ham had dwelt there of old. The dogs, people. I don't know if it's as loud as it is in my ears, but I can't take chances, can I?
Mm. Please, dogs, can you just stop already? Can you just stop already? Okay, let's go. And their villages. And their villages were Atam and Ain, Remon and Tochen and Ashen, five cities. Like seriously? Oh my God. I believe the dogs are so loud. Maybe we're just gonna read this and then um, if I get that it's not loud, fine. If we get to the end of the session, I'll probably just read it again because by then the dogs should have gone. So let me just take it um, from where I think we ended and go on even with the dogs in the background. We probably might end up being able to manage it, even with the dog sounds. And all their villages, no, no. And their villages were Atam and Ayin, Rimon and Tochen and Ashen, five cities. And all their villages that were round about the same cities unto Baal, these were their habitations and their genealogy. And Meshobat and Meshodat and Meshobab and Jamlech and Joshash the son of Amaziah and Joel and Jehu the son of Josibiah the son of Seriah the son of Asiel and Elionai and Jacobar and Jeshosh and Jeshohiah and Ahasiah and Adiel and Jeshimel and Benaiah and Zizar the son of Shifi, the son of Alon, the son of Jediah, the son of Shimri, the son of Shemaiah, these mentioned by their names were princes in their families, and the house of their fathers increased greatly, and they went to the entrance of Gedor, even unto the east side of the valley to seek pasture for their flocks, and they found fat pasture and good in land was wide and quiet and peaceable for they of Ham had dwelt there of old and these written by name came in the days of Hezekiah king of Judah and smote their tents and the habitations that were found there and destroyed them utterly unto this day and dwelled in their rooms because there was pasture there for their flocks and some of them even of the sons of Simeon, 500 men went to Mount Say, having for their captains Pelatiah and Neariah and Rephiah and Uziel, the son of Ishi. And they smote the rest of the Amalekites that were escaped and dwell there unto this day. And all the saints shall say, Thanks be to God after we say, this is the word of the Lord. And we all say, thanks be to God. Okay, we're still on with genealogies and everything that was happening. This one got married to this and gave birth to this and gave birth to this and gave birth to this. Sometimes we hardly even hear about the ladies, but I'm really grateful and happy that I heard some places they say, and the daughter was, and the daughter was, because it looks like in the genealogies they were only recognizing men excuse me it feels like in the genealogies they were only recognizing men but nope they were not only recognizing men they were recognizing some women as well which is a good thing so you can also be one of that those women that will be recognized in your generation let it not only be the men in your generation that are recognized let it not only be your, the men in your generation that when they're not around for a moment everybody's like oh things aren't going right when you are not around a particular place and environment your presence should be missed well missed okay
it should be missed people should be like oh my god i wish princess was here i wish princess is here again and stuff like that it should happen if you've not started doing that in your environment so much so that people can miss you when you're not there anymore then you can start now it's never too late don't say oh that's not who i am right now people don't miss me i've not been doing good you can start doing the good now maybe that's why you listen to this message maybe that's why princess was created for such a time as this to bring this message to you at this point in time so that you can start making that move how do you want to be remembered when you're no longer here on earth? We all are going to die someday. So think about it. If you're not on earth, how do you want to be remembered? Do you want to be remembered like the person that, or do you want to be that kind of person that when you're dead, people will be like, oh, hallelujah. Thank God she's gone. This one was a pain in the neck. This one was a pain in the neck. Is that how you want to be remembered? Or you want to be, oh, I wish princess was here. I wish it didn't go. I just so wish it didn't go. But you all should not fret. Just like Lady Dr. Miles Monroe said, I ain't leaving this air when I'm not done doing what God sent me here to do. I'm a woman with a mission, a woman with a vision, a woman with a purpose, and I'm unstoppable. There ain't no stopping me. Until I'm done doing what God has sent me here to do, I ain't going nowhere. So you all don't fret. Don't freak out. I ain't going nowhere anytime soon. Except the trumpet sounds that is fair enough by that time i'd want to leave this place <laughs> okay so they keep going on and with all the genealogies and who gave birth to who and who was in this family and this and then we get to the point where they say adverse adverse uh, nine it says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren and his mother called his name jabez same because I bear him in sorrow. There is no way we can overemphasize this. I wish I could say this in a different language so that I should sink in better. But well, the perfect language that I can use is English. Unfortunately, even my vernacular, I don't know how to use it. I should have probably used it in this kind of scenario so that people should understand what we're talking about. See, whether you believe it or not, names have power. Names have effect on the people that bear them. When the Bible says before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. God had already known this guy before he was formed in his mother's womb. And he was born, called by God to be an honorable man. He had to be way better than all his brothers. But boom. How was that thwarted for as long as he lived until he realized that something was wrong and went to God and cried out? He was suffering the consequences of the name that was given to him. He wasn't living in his purpose. He wasn't living in the, in the beauty of how God intended and desired for him to live. God had really said he was more honorable than his brethren. He probably was supposed to have been the one looking out for his brethren, looking out for sisters, looking out for the brothers and all. No. It looks like they were looking out for him. It looks like he was even suffering. Because if he was not suffering, he wouldn't pray this kind of prayer. But hey, in God's books, when he was created, he was supposed to be an honorable person. He was supposed to be a leader. He was supposed to be a helper. He was supposed to be the one who carries his family along, probably. But no, here, he is like a servant. Why? Because the mom bore him in sorrow and gave him a sad name. Child of God. It's about time we stop confessing the things that are happening around us, the things we're seeing with our naked eyes, and confessing the things we desire to see. Most of our lives today is an accumulation of some things we said by ourselves to ourselves. And some is some things that people said to us and we didn't cancel it.
Today, people think me rude, but I'm not. I'm just intentional about what you say to me and what I let to sink into my gate. You tell me you're stupid. I tell you I'm not stupid. I'm super smart. I'm not proud. I'm just negating that word that you want to plant in my life and planning something better that is going to counter that one. It is that simple. It's not rocket science. It doesn't need to be complicated to be God. It can be simple and be God. Oh yes, most of us Africans, it looks like we've grown up with this whole mentality that if it's God, it has to be complicated. It doesn't have to always be complicated to be God. It can be God and not complicated. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you right now. It can be God and not complicated. So this guy, he was born and he was called to be an honorable person. He was supposed to be honorable, more honorable than his brethren. Not even like his brethren, than his brethren. Is that you in your family? You were born to be the one to help your family through trying times, to remove them from a situation that they are and put them in a better place. You were called to be that person. But your life doesn't look like it. It looks like it's the other way around. It looks like instead it's people that are taking care of you. It's people that are helping you. It's people that are supporting you some more. And so like, what is going on? You know, like what is going on? You know, like that. And so Jabez decided to call on the name of the Lord. Look at the patterns in your life. Look at some of the things that are happening consistently and in a funny way. And you don't like it. Call on God and talk about it. Me, I'm tired of being at one level for a long time. I am tired of being at this mountain for too long. It's time to arise and shine. You have to arise. Sometimes we miss it because we don't want to play our part. The Bible says, arise and shine for your light has come. It's you who is doing the arising. God is not going to come and lift you up. You have to wake up. You have to get up. It says, arise and shine for thy light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You have to do the arising. God can't do that part for you now where we should at least now we should do our part. Most of us Christians were under the auspices of laziness and were saying God has not said anything. God has not. No, no, no. He has said, but you don't want to play your part. You don't want to take responsibilities. You want God to come and do everything for you. Shade should put food in your mouth and also help you chew it and swallow it for you. I'm sure some of us Christians, if it was possible, would do it. That we don't do nothing, they just do everything for us. Put food in your mouth, chew the food for you and swallow it for you. If people had that option, some people would take it. Jabez had to go to God himself. He didn't just sit and then God just changed his name. He had to be uncomfortable with the situation so much so that he calls on God. Are you uncomfortable with the level you're at? Are you a uncomfortable with what is happening in your life with what is happening around you are you uncomfortable child of God if you're uncomfortable like Jabez you will call on the Lord oh that thou wouldest bless me Clayton and enlarge my coast indeed bless me indeed and enlarge my coast let your hand be with me Lord and keep me from evil that it may not grieve me. And God granted him his request. See, if God did not withhold his son Jesus from you, there ain't nothing at all. There is nothing on earth or in the heavens that you ask God that he will not give you. Except it's not the God I serve. His son was the best thing ever. His son was the best gift ever. There is nothing at all. Nothing that can be compared to his son. Here on earth, in heaven, under the earth, in the seas, wherever. Go high, deep, far, low, wide, east, west, top, bottom, from back and center. You ain't going to find nothing or no one. None. And so this guy got tired of the situation he was at. 
and he had to change it. There's some of us, like I said, at some point I wanted to go and change my name, but I got to realize that my name ain't bad at all. My name is really technically me. My name means peace, like bringing together, like togetherness or something like that. <laughs> I'm not surprised why I like to be amongst people, why I like to gather people, why I like to be in the company of friends. I'm not surprised. When they told me that, I wasn't surprised. I'm the one who tried to connect with every cousin, niece, nephew, longest distance ones that I know. The ones that I don't even understand sometimes. I don't even really know them. That's how amazing this thing is. Okay. And so he prayed and called on God. You have to get tired of the position you are you have to get tired of the situation you have so like i said there was a time i wanted to change my name but it's not so easy in african countries you can't just go ahead and up and change your name <laughs> it's going to affect a lot of your documents and before you want to make a document the processing and all is just going to be crazy so some people just give up the whole idea because it is important if god knew that it was important to change abraham's name from abraham to abraham and sarai from sarah to sarah then even you, you need a change of name. From Jacob to Israel, even you, you need a change of name. If your name is not doing you good, if your name is not bringing you the desired result that it's supposed to, it's supposed to bring, child of God, you need to look into that name. You need to look into that name. So every time they were calling him Jabez, all his friends screamed Jabez, they're, they're actually declaring sorrow to him. Every time they see him, they'll declare... Jabez, Jabez, sorrow, sorrow, sorrow. I don't know in this case if God changed his name or God just gave him what he was asking for and everything. But my dear, if my name is seriously dangerous, I would change it. <laughs> and I've told us from the beginning to the end, I stand with the notion that I ain't going to give no father's name or brother's name or sister's name or husband's name to my child. That is going to jeopardize my child's future. If your name's meaning is going to affect us negatively, I am sorry, brother, sister. I love you with all of my strength, power, and being. But I will not jeopardize my child's future to please you. Lie, lie. Lie, lie. Nobody will see fire and carry their children and throw into fire. Mm -mm. You prevent them from going to fire so that even if they end up deciding to touch the fire by themselves, it's just a little chunk that will touch them. And of course, they might learn the lesson. But as for throwing my child in the fire, you're a joker and the joke is on you. So, yeah, we need to be careful. Don't get all sentimental. Don't get all emotional. Or your dad is getting angry that his genealogy is not going to continue. His name is not going to continue. His name is going to be cut for. No, but if his name means sorrow, why am I going to handing over sorrow to my children? It makes no sense. It makes no freaking sense. Like, I know that my father's name is sorrow. And then I'll be giving birth to children and giving them sorrow that they should be called sorrow. You got to be kidding me, right? You got to be so kidding me. I won't do that. I ain't going to get emotional. Things of God are not emotional things. Things of God are serious things. There's some sacrifices you would have to make. Will it cost you? Oh, yes, it will cost you. David said, I ain't going to give something to my God that doesn't cost me. Most of the things we have to give to God will cost us. But is the cost worth it? It's worth it. I ain't going to give my children. I would explain to my parents as much as I can and show them in the Bible as much as I can. But as for them understanding it, I'm not responsible for how they perceive whatever I'm doing. But I know how it's going to affect my children's future. So I ain't going to put my children in a jeopardized situation because I want to please my parents or my father or my brother or my sister's momentary desire that would lead to a generational wahala for my child. See, Jabez who was born and God ordained him to be more honorable than his brothers. But see what he was suffering because of the name that was given to him. So imagine Jabez giving birth to his children and giving their names Jabez. Jabez Jr. Jabberasha or something like just think of a girl version. Jabeshina or something like that. 
And he knows that Jabez means sorrow. Ain't that just outright stupid? It is. You know that your name is Wahala, confusion and trouble, and you still carry it and give it to your children? Then you have a problem. Your parents might be forgiven, but you, you sure have a freaking problem. And it needs to be fixed in the shortest time possible. So giving names is a very serious thing. We have to be very careful about it. And then they continue with all their giving beds and their um and all the names. And I think we got some part again where they said something very important. I'm trying to look for it. And So I, I'm not sure I can find the place anymore, but yes, there was a place that I saw again that something was mentioned and I can't find it anymore. Oh yeah. No, it, it wasn't just one place. It was in a, a couple of places. I wanted to talk about being good in your skill. Being good where God called you. Being good in the place where God purposed and kept you. They said some of them were craftsmen. Some of them were, um, what's that again? They were good in artwork or something like that. They were good in this. They, they just mentioned a couple of them. They mentioned some of them and they said these ones were good in craft. They were great craftsmen. This one were good in this area, this area. See, they will not come and call you when you're not good in anything. You know how they always say, Jack of all trade, master of none. Yes, I know. It's good to know a little bit of this and that and that. But nobody is going to call you when you're not a master at a particular thing that they need a service for. Knowing everything is good, but knowing one particular thing perfectly so much so that when your name is mentioned, nobody will think of any other thing but that thing. If talking and media is mentioned, a lot of people, my friends and people who know me will call me. That's how it's supposed to be. When they call basketball, everybody will call Michael Jordan, late Michael Jordan. When they call, um, um, how they call that thing again? Tiger Woods. What's that his game again? I just forgot it. <laughs> That's so not funny. Okay. When they call some things, there are just some particular people that their names are going to pop up in your head. Why? Because they are perfect in those things. They, they, it's just their thing. It's their thing. right it's their thing so there has to be that thing that is your thing and god created you for that thing that's that guy's gift and he uses it to entertain people and make money while at it those are their things you can now go and want to be a basketballer because michael jordan is late michael jordan was making some big money so much money through playing basketball no you will so fail woefully some people might learn the craft and become good at it, but you only always be second best. You are only the best and the best and the best at what you were created and called to do. What you were created and called to do. So people, <laughs> We need to be good at something. 
You need to find that thing that God has called you to be a solution to. God created you to be a solution. You're not created, you're not brought to this earth by mistake. Forget that thing that may be the give birth to you when your parents are not prepared. They give birth to you out of wedlock. It was a prostitute that gave birth to you. It was Jesus came out of the lineage of a prostitute, people. So calm down, be calming down. Where you came from doesn't matter, but where you're headed, it matters a lot. And you have a lot to play as to where you end up. Where you came from, it was none of your choice. But you would have to make a choice on where you end up. You can't get mad, you can't get bitter about where you came from. You didn't make a choice. You didn't choose the family where you were born from. But you can choose where you want to be in the future. You can choose with who you want to be in the future. Yes, child of God. That's how it works. That's how we roll. So stop giving excuses. Stop giving those flimsy excuses and step up your game and do the needful. Stop giving those excuses, people. Stop giving these excuses. Go to God. Wait in his presence. A servant of God said some time ago that I'd rather be in the presence of God for 10 years and hear him. Let him speak to me and give me that one single thing that I'll do. And by the time I step my foot on it to do it, boom. It's just going to be explosive because that's what God wants me to do. Than to take 10 years and struggling and struggling in places where God has nothing to do. He has nothing at all to do with me. Why? Because that 10 years, I should have made a beautiful bond with God. So I lost nothing. And then I would start afresh with all my resources and everything. And I'm just starting and getting it right. I'm just going and going and going. While you're still falling left and right, front, back and center, helter skelter. God wants the best for us. We have to depend on him. We have to rely on him. He knows how to shock our enemies and shock us even. <laughs> so people, if there's anything you should take out of here today is names are powerful. They can mar or make you. May the good Lord help us all. And of course, we have to be good at something. Because if we're not good, they said this family was good at being craftsmen. This one was good at doing this. This one was good at doing this. So at every point in time when they needed somebody in that field, they will go back to that family. They will not just go randomly. They will first of all go to this family, this family, this family. In-house people get the most information first. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we bless you. We magnify you, we honor you, because you deserve all the praise. And yes, people, it has been another beautiful day with you on a chapter a day. I'm all excited. I thank God for all that he has done, he's doing, and he's still to do in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless you, Lord. Let your name alone be glorified. Let your word be engrafted on the fleshly tables of our hearts so that we're going to live thereby. Let no weapon form the fashion against us prosper in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for always being there. We thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercies. Take preeminence, put now forevermore. For in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say and amen. Have a great week. Happy new month once again to those who I'm just talking to for the first time. Happy new month. Happy new month. God bless you. Stay connected with me on the chapter a day every single day. Tomorrow is another day. It's going to be a beautiful first Chronicles chapter five. Get to read ahead of time and come back here tomorrow. Let's have a swell time together. Okay, people. So like I said, we're going to do our best to read again. Are you kidding me right now? We're just about to read and then the dogs are coming through. These things aren't good. So.
So we have to read again. Where did we end the last time again? Oh, where did we end? Mm, okay. Let me just start reading from verse 28. Okay, we, we're doing this because the last time the dogs were actually backing on the other one and we're not sure how loud it was going to be. So I went ahead and read it and I told us that when we're done, we're going to read it again. So when we're editing, we'll come to the back and collect it from here. So let's go. That's what we're reading now. If you're just stepping in now, don't get excited that we're just starting a chapter already. We're done. <laughs> okay, let's go. And they dwelt at Bathsheba and Molada and Hazashual and at Bilhar and at Ezem and at Tolard and at Bethwell and at Horma and at Ziklag and at Bedmakabod and at Hazasusim and at Bedbire and at Sharim. These were their cities until the reign of David. And their villages were Atam and Ain and Rimon and Tochen and Ashen, five cities, and all their villages that were round about the same cities unto Baal. These were their habitations and their genealogy. And Meshobab and Jamlich and Joshash, the son of Amaziah, and Joel and Jehu, the son of Josibiah, the son of Seraiah, the son of Asiel, and Elionai, and Jacobar, and Joshahir, and Ahasiah, and Adiel, and Jeshimiel, and Benaiah, and Zizar, the son of Shifi, the son of Alon, the son of Jediah, the son of Zim Shimri, the son of Shemaiah, these mentioned by their names were princes in their families and the house of their fathers increased greatly. And they went to the entrance of Gedor, even unto the east side of the valley to seek pasture for their flocks. And they found fat pastures and good and the land was wide and quiet and peaceable for they for they of Ham had dwelt there of old, and these written by name came in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah, and smote their tents and the, inhab and the habitations that were found there, and destroyed them utterly unto this day, and dwelled in their rooms, because there was pasture there for their flocks. And some of them, even of the sons of Simeon, Five hundred men went to Mount Say, having their captains Pelatir, Pelatire, and Neariah, and Rephire, and Uziel, the sons of Ishi, and they smote the rest of the Amalekites that were escaped and dwell there unto this day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God but we're done. So thank you people for being here today. I really appreciate you. We have our audio Bible on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and we're looking forward to having it on Instagram as well. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, follow us on all our social media platforms. I always get to say I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Until tomorrow.